What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, YouTube, and welcome to 2024. Well, I'm really stoked about this year because I've got a whole bunch of model kits from all the way around the world. And today I thought we would start our first video of the year right in the United Kingdom. So I got a really awesome Christmas present from my oldest daughter. Hi there, you know who you are. So basically I got Ravel's brand new Jaguar XKE. This model kit is really exciting with a lot of cool parts. Just check that thing out. Again, really awesome. So without further delay, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now let's wind that clock all the way back to 1961, where we check out this exciting Jaguar XKE from Ravel. This is all new tooling for ages 13 and up. This is a skill level five. So that is the top of the line for the Ravel Germany skill levels. It would be a skill level three over here in America or Canada even. And this is in 124 scale. So that's a perfect scale for the Nadies garage figures and all the rest of that sort of thing. On this side of the box, we see the wonderful built up model in a three quarter view frontal shot as well as a close-up up over the hood so you can see the wonderful louvers and the mirrors and even the antenna and windshield wipers. And then from the back end we get the English style license plate, the long license plate. Ours over here are like little square rectangles and closer. So maybe there's a conversion in this kit, that'll be neat to see. And then here is a image of the parts tree. I mean look at this thing, this is huge right here. And then we have a nice detailed interior shot with the wood grain steering wheel and shifter knob, as well as up under the hood with that nice erasing type of cage in there. Over on this side of the box, we see the wonderful write-up, which I'll put down below in the description of this video, as well as the paints we need for this kit. And these coincide with the Ravel Germany colors. And check this out, October 2022, Aplex Poland. So this is definitely a Ravel of Germany kit. Now if we look underneath the box, we'll notice that this kit is not shrink wrapped. It's actually sealed with four stickers, which are transparent here. So I've got my hobby knife and I've been waiting to crack this open ever since I saw this kit. And this was also one of my Christmas presents from my daughter. So again, even uh, better. Christmas 2024, in case you're watching years later or whatever. So let's just cut this all open and now I can turn it over and open the box. Are you excited to open this? I sure am. So as I lift the lid, I'm just going to read up some of the little descriptions here. So first off, the length of this kit is 7.36 inches. Number of parts is 142. Molded in multicolor and the decals are water slide. All right, check this out. Everything is individually packages, packaged. Pardon me. There's the chrome in the windshield. I must be so excited here. <laughs> I can't English very well. I can't British. All right, anyway, there is the body panels. And here we have the clear transparent parts. Tires in a separate bag. Oh, these ones are kind of cool. Check that out in a minute. And then we have red and white pieces, or very light gray, I guess it is. And then we've got all our suspension and the engine. That's funny, this is not molded in black. It's actually molded in that light white gray color. Now check this out. Hey, somebody was uh, paying attention to Mobius by making full color instruction sheets. That is amazing. Oh man, this kit is gonna be good. Somewhere in here should be the decal sheet. So let's clear all this out of the way and then we'll take a look at the instructions. Here we have the full color instruction sheet, and this is a big booklet. Here is my hand for reference. So basically two panels and very huge. I love the red color on this Jaguar, it looks really great. If any of you have seen this license plate on any car in England, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe it's just faked up, I don't know. But again, look at this. So I'm just gonna turn this over to the back for a minute. I rarely do this in a video. In fact, I don't think I ever have. But at any rate, here is the top side front and rear view of the car. And it also tells you all the paint colors up here or whatever, where to paint it. So I just wanted to show you this illustration again. Very cool stuff and wonderful that it's in full color. 
Now over here in Canada and America, we're not really used to Revell Germany instructions unless you buy a lot of these kits over here. But take a look at this. This is all basically tips and suggestions on how to build the kit. And they're all numbered in each of the panels. And I do believe there is some corresponding stuff over on this page that's off camera right now. But again, really cool that they add this into this instruction sheet. Here's another cool thing included in the instruction sheet. There are pages of all the paint colors. And this uh, model is really built for the international world stage because it's got all the colors listed in. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three languages for each of the colors. That's why this instruction sheet is so big. And right here is a mixture chart. Sometimes it'll say mix this with that. So they actually have like, here's 95%, which is, I guess, 19 drops to 5%, which would be one drop. So again, all these cool ratios and things included in here. And then if you go on this page, this is a full, uh, what do you call it? Parts tree sheet. That's all the parts trees. This is all the parts that are listed on here and what they are down below. And again, here we have the red parts trees as well as part trees for the interior and the chrome and the glass and the tires. Again, really awesome stuff. And it even shows here that these are clear with the little circles. Okay, everybody, buckle up and strap in. Grab your popcorn, because this is going to take a while as we investigate how a German company builds a model of a British car. Are you ready? All right, this is going to be good. So here we have the right and left-hand side engine block halves, as well as all the paint color callouts with these little flags here. And then down below we have our oil pan. So glue these together, then stick the oil pan up, number one, number two. And then on this side we have the top of the engine. So these are your cams up here, overhead cams, I do believe. And then we've got our front timing chain cover, as well as this component here, which might be a water pump. Uh, then down here we have our distributor being glued into place. Panel 3 shows our belts and pulleys, as well as the generator or alternator maybe at this stage. And then here goes on the front of the engine. We also have our exhaust manifold here. It also gives you times that it would take to get this together. I guess that's uh, allowing the glue to dry. There are decals all over here as well in these little green boxes. Now here we have that infamous Jaguar independent rear end. Corvette, to some extent, made their own version of this. So it looks like we have the axle as well as the differential, the top of the differential case, down or the bottom, I guess, because it's upside down. And then down here is the top as well as the back of the differential case. So again, gluing it together. It's nice to see these in color. Reminds me of the Games Workshop instruction sheets for Warhammer. Step five is showing our rear axle being glued into the underneath of our interior, as well as part of the frame, I do believe. But here it shows you to paint this area black or even flat black, and then to glue this in. And over here we also have some brackets which go in in the front and back of that differential. Panel seven shows our dual springs being glued in here on either side of the rear axle. And you know who uses an independent axle as well? It is Datsun in the earlier 510s and that sort of thing. Basically patterned off of this Jaguar. So, and then here we've got the rest of the rear axle. So these look like the universal joints in here as well as some of the braces. And then there we have our drive shaft going in from the back of the differential into the engine. Panel 9 shows our exhaust system here with the dual pipes and dual mufflers. Again, really awesome looking stuff. And then in panel 10, we see how our engine gets glued together. And don't forget to put the end of the transmission onto the end of that drive shaft. Panel 11 shows our completed exhaust assembly being glued onto the chassis. And it seems to go up over top of everything. Now you glue on the ends of the exhaust tips into the ends of the exhaust manifold. So make sure you get that done nicely. And then there's this front panel that glues onto the front of the chassis. Now going over into panel 12, we see the front axle being glued up together. These are all the different supports and whatnot. 
So again, really cool looking stuff. Looks like these go down here and lock in somehow. So make sure you get that right. Panel 13 shows the rack and pinion style front steering. And here you get these wonderful king pins with disc brakes on the front. And there's the rack being glued into place here and here. Now, it does say not to use glue, so you could have posable steering in here. I do believe that, now I don't know, you could heat the little pins, slip this through and then heat the pin on the top just to keep this from coming off, but I don't know if it's necessary. Have not built this kit before. Anyway, step 14 shows that assembly being added into place. And here you've got your lower A arms with the holes in them for these holes here to fit in down there. Panel 15 is showing the wonderful firewall. And this looks more like a painting guide. You can see the paintbrush right here. So again, really cool stuff. And there's all the callouts for everything. And then in panel 16, we see the installation of that firewall into the front of the car. Okay, I think I'm getting hip onto what these instruction sheets are calling out. So here we have the glue symbol and there's some time. So you're going to glue this on and let it sit for a while. But there is the lower A arms, or no, I guess these are the upper A arms and they are attaching onto the firewall at the back here with this nice framing. And then the holes are going in on the top of those king pins in there. And then this down here is gonna glue onto the front on that panel. Then we get into panel 18. So there's some glue, some paint and some decals going on. And what we have here is the front shock absorbers being snaked up underneath the steering and glued into place. There's a little pin right here, right by that hole and then it gets glued on the top in a slot. Panel 19 shows our three carburetors being painted up and assembled, as well as the bottom portion of this W shape for our carburetors to go into. And then down here, it looks like this is some kind of canister. I do believe it's all tied in with the carburetors again. And then we have these three bottle looking pieces being glued onto here. And there is a decal for this as well. I'm sorry, I'm not too familiar with the Jaguars, so I don't know what all of this is, you know, and how it relates. But we will see as we go through this instruction sheet together. Next up, we get this interesting component here. I do believe this, again, is part of the air cleaning system. So we have a top cover and a bottom and a little hose out here, which you would paint with a flat rubber color. Now, this is cool because this is what I was actually hoping for. You get left-hand side and right-hand side steering in this car. So 23 shows a question mark, so that's your options. It's going to glue and you need paint. It says only left-hand drive. So here we've got our steering column at the bottom, as well as what I do believe is possibly the brake master cylinder here. And this will drop into our firewall on this side. And then down here, actually it goes across here onto the left-hand side. Pardon me, I, I just saw the red arrow here. I didn't see it bending over the top of the engine. So this will glue right into here. And then this looks like a water bottle of some sort, and that glues right here on the firewall. Now panel 24 is only right-hand drive. So this time around, the entire steering box glues onto this side of the car. And what's cool about this is the master cylinder is here, and the column is on this side. And if we just go back to the left-hand drive side, you can see that this is reversed. So if you actually want to super detail maybe a Japanese model kit, like a uh, Honda or something, you could actually potentially either take this part and put it into the Honda or whatever, or you could actually just take a look at how this works. You know, this uh, master cylinder on this side and the console on the other and make your own version. So anyway, here we have the right-hand drive. So this time around, it does go on this side. And there's that water bottle down below being glued onto the firewall here. And then panel 25 shows our battery being dropped in place. This goes on that cool looking space frame type of deal that Jaguar has. Or maybe it's uh, more like a Lotus Indie, no, not Indie, uh, like um, <laughs> international race car type of setup here. So at any rate, the battery goes here. There is a slot and or a tab and a slot here. So here in panel 26, we see this unit being glued up in here on the firewall. So this looks like it might be 
part of that air cleaning system. And then here we have an, I guess this would be an external blower or a air collector or some kind of device like that, which glues right behind the battery. I know you Jaguar guys are shaking your head. Come on, Trevor, do your homework, but I'm sorry. I'm just excited to see this because you don't usually get a 140 piece kit that often, especially something cool like this. Now check this out. You can almost have a working fan in here. So here is the back of the radiator. There's a fan with a stick on it, which passes through the front of the radiator or the inside of the radiator. This almost looks like an electric setup, doesn't it? With that uh, cool looking shroud right there. So here we are with panel 28 and now we see our radiator being glued in place and that long rod actually does connect in onto the engine block right in that hole there. So that is really interesting. Uh, hopefully that didn't cause any flexing or anything weird and uh, cause stress on that shaft on the real car. At any rate, we also have this side of the engine, which I'm not sure what that is, but it's going up into the cylinders. And then we have what again appears to be an air cleaner set up right there, being glued onto this side of the car. Panel 30, we see our carburetors being glued onto the engine, and now this starts to make sense. So this would be your air filter down in here, and then the carburetors are going up onto the sides of that. So your air is coming in through this pipe down here and up in through the filter, getting split into that W shape and going into the carburetors. And then here, there's another little cool little piece. Almost looks like the pump for the fuel, fuel pump. And then look at all the decals that are going on this. Again, really cool stuff. And here we have a water tank expansion going up onto the radiator. Panel 32 shows all our tubing and another tank up here and the rubber hose. And then in panel 33, we see this goes on top of that expansion tank on the radiator. And then we get this here. And I do believe this is either to do with the injection, fuel injection in here, or maybe even the spark plug wires, because sometimes they used a uh, cover like this just to hide the wires all through the distributor and whatnot. Here we have panel 34 and you get a left hand drive and a right hand drive dashboard. And again, look at all the decals on here. This is like really amazing. This is really cool. There's an EU, European Union version and a USA version. So you get either choice of the decals. Oh, that is for your instruments right there. So I guess one would be in miles and the other would be in kilometers. Panel 35 and 36 show us up underneath the dashboard for the left-hand drive and the right-hand drive. Basically, they're the same. It's just the location of your instruments and where this is all going. So what we have is our pedals being glued onto the back of our dashboard, and we've got our steering column being glued up underneath and the steering wheel being glued on the end. And again, we are treated to a lot of decals. Now I'm really digging this left and right hand side drive type of thing and I wish all the model kit manufacturers would take a lesson off of this and offer this in all the car kits for the imports and exports and whatnot. So here we have the left hand drive center console and it shows to drill these holes out. This is a little drill icon and what we have is the parking brake being glued in. Oh I see. So you're drilling this hole here on the left hand side drive and when you go on to the right hand side you're drilling the opposite hole because this is where the driver's seat is going to be on this side and for the uh, American style it's going to be on this side so you're moving your stick across onto where it's more convenient for the driver. <laughs> I like this. So we also have our gear shift lever going in here up in the front which would be mounted onto the floorboards. Now here we have the back luggage area for our Jaguar and we're painting it in a black color it appears and we've got the back wall and then in panel 39 we see this piece being glued into place and there's that center console being glued up into the floor mounted console here of our model. Panel 40 is showing the upper wall being glued in place right across the wheel arches. And then down here we have another little panel which goes in more into the interior area and covers up this section here. Now panel 41 is showing these little tiny details which look amazing. They're almost like uh, 
a door striker plate or something weird like that. At any rate, these little chrome guys go right there and there. Panel 42 shows our dashboard being glued into place. And here there's a cautionary note. I guess that's just to make sure you glue enough glue on here so it's not a big deal. We also got a little radio that locks into place in front of the gear shift lever. And this looks like the back of the steering column goes into a little dot onto here as well, which is cool. Then panel 43, we start to get some of the interior pieces. So this is the side door panels, inner door panels. And we got a handle and the window crank. Again, really amazing stuff. It's always great when they do these separately. Panel 44 is showing the opposite interior door panel and again the door handle itself as well as the window crank. And now we see these being glued into place. And here is another little interesting detail showing something to do with the steering wheel being glued in. I guess this is the dashboard being glued in onto side rails in the body. Oh no, I see. It's right there on the inner door panels. So make sure you get the bottom of the dash in that little groove on the inner door panels. Here in panel 46, we see our bucket seats being glued into place. And then in panel 47, we start assembling the wheels. These are really nice looking wheels. Get a wheel back, you get a wheel retainer. There's the tires and it's saying to cut out this neat little web inside, get rid of that. And then we have our chrome wire wheels and it's even got a knockoff cap which glues on and there's a decal which goes on the end of the knockoff. Panel 48 shows our wheels being installed up onto the chassis of our car. It does say to put a little glue on, wait some time, and then add on a decal, which is this one going up on the seat. So we'll have to take a look at what that is. And then here we see the body being flipped upside down. It does say to paint the interior up in here and add on that little mirror. And we've got another decal, which goes up in here, up along the back of the window. Panel 50 is showing the body being installed up onto the completed chassis and interior. And it does say to use some caution because I think here you need to spread the outer body halves on the doors. Just spread them open a little bit so it pops into place. It should lock on like a nice clamshell. And then right here we can see the windshield and the glass being installed and glued into place. Looks like it's going from the outside basically being glued in from the outside. So make sure you use caution right there. Panel 52 shows the glass being installed and here we have our rear window being dropped into place as well as the side glass being glued up into here. And then in the back we start getting our rear bumpers and taillights. And well, these are the taillights here. So we're gluing them into place. You looks like you're painting in here transparent red. And then you've got some clear lenses, which also need to be painted with transparent lead and amber. Red, red, not lead. And then these will be glued into place, and that'll be glued onto the back of the car. Panel 54 shows our wonderful rear bumpers being glued on. And these are really curvy right in here. They basically start from the back of the wheel arch opening and wrap all the way up underneath those tail lights. So again, that is really cool. And then here we've got this little bit and... I'm not quite sure what that is. Either it's a piece that connects the two bumpers up underneath, or it's a little chrome doodad, like a backup reverse light or something. I am not sure. It's clear. It's got to be a reverse light. Sorry, I just saw that last second. So here we are, panel 55, and again, glue and paint and some decals. But here we have those little rubber bumpers. These are also like lights in here to light up the license plate and those glue on. And we do have a choice of the EU version, which is the long plate and the US version, which will be uh, taller and shorter. Panel 56 begins the construction of the inside underneath of the hood. So here we have a support right in here, as well as the headlight backs and the lenses. So here it looks like there is chrome going on. And again, that would look really nice and reflective. Maybe it's chrome and then you paint the backs. I think that's what we're getting at here. So this wall now drops into this component, which is the front fender splashes in here, as well as the support for the hood. And then these look like they appear to be hinges of some description. So they will be glued into here. Here we get into panel 58 and you can see the bottom of the hood being glued into place with the hood. Now this is important to make sure you got the steps right. So number one is this whole support underneath area that we've made. 
which seem to include the inner wheel aprons. So this gets glued up underneath the hood, and then that panel gets dropped into the front. And then here it looks like we've got some options again. So either painting this area red or gray or a black. Now, I'm not too sure, so you'll have to look up some research on your Jaguar to make sure you understand what's going on there, because I don't. <laughs> not at this stage of the video anyway. All right, so panel 59, we see the hood being put onto the front of the body. So now remember these long slots that are up in here? These are now to help you open the hood because they go on these little pins right in here on this bar. And then they would, uh, like, so for example, when the hood's down, let's say the, no, the hood, when the hood's down, the pin should be here. And then when you open the hood, they will slide down into this area. You know, something to that effect. It's much like the flip nose dragster kits that you can get from uh, Ravel and whatnot. Operates the same way. The hood lifts from the front forward, much like an 84 Corvette. Panel 60 shows our headlights and the nice chrome rings being glued in place. So be very cautious around here that you don't get glue on the clear parts. And then here we've got our front side marker lights and that sort of thing being glued into place. And then we get into panel 61 and it, we've also got wonderful wraparound curved front bumpers which glue in. And then here we've got the bracket for our license plate. And you also get a US version or the UK version which you can add onto here with wonderful decals. Panel 62 shows our wonderful two-piece mirror being glued into place. So we have a reflector as well as the housing, and that drops into here. And now it's optional if you want to have the antenna sticking up here in the center of the roof. So it says to go back from the molding of our front windshield, 1.5 millimeters, and then scrape a little paint off, scrape the paint off the bottom here of your antenna, and glue that into place. Panel 64 shows something interesting that I never really realized before, but this Jaguar actually has three windshield wipers. One for the driver, one for the passenger, and one right in the middle. I guess Jaguar couldn't make like a long wiper or try to do this with two wipers, like the American cars where they cross in the middle. So, interesting. Three wipers in the middle. Then panel 65 shows the door handle being glued in place, and it's always nice when the door handles are separate and not molded to the body, because for realism, you should actually drill out in here if it's solid. So with this, you don't have to do that. So that is always nice. Panel 66 gets into the painting and decaling of the final bit of the car, and I did show this at the beginning of the video, so... There it all is. Again, this kit looks amazing. And I can see which daughter now is going to get a little more in the inheritance. Next up, we have the Jaguar body. And I actually brought out the hood because these are in the same bag together. Oh, my red stick might not actually show up. But, oh well, we'll do what we can. So at any rate, we've got the back of the body and the front hood. Now, these are not molded together. They are separate. But you can see that the hood has a little pin right here, which goes into that hole. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for a sec. Now take a look at that body. Again, really awesome looking work. But it almost looks like a, a Porsche, this little back area here. Like an old uh, 911. Very old. <laughs> like the same era. Again, we got the back taillights, the opening for them. This is really sweet. You got the little gas filler door right there. Again, quite simple looking. There are quite a few mold marks underneath in this roof. Oh, that's even on the sun visors and up and under here. So again, make sure you remove those. But be careful around here because that A pillar looks really, really, really thin and maybe even frail. So next up we have the hood. This really reminds me of a Datsun 240Z from the 70s. So you can see where Datsun got inspired. There's all those hood louvers. Again, really cool stuff. There are some lines up here. Now, make sure you... Uh, I don't think you're supposed to sand these off. I think they're supposed to actually be chromed because they're part of a trim package, I believe. Again, look it up. I could be wrong. Now, you got mold marks up the center of the hood, and you've got a number in here, G63. Don't know if that's actually stock on a real Jaguar. Uh, then... Mold marks are quite the deal on this kit. 
But again, I mean, man, look at how many parts are in here. So it's that trade-off, right? Uh, do mold marks really affect you? Again, you can sand them out and make it all pretty. So it's all really up to you. But again, I think uh, Revelle Germany did a nice job. So there it is in nice red plastic. Next up, we have the two red parts trees. So here we can see the chassis and interior section of our Jaguar. And then we've got all the brackets and supports in the bottom of that hood. Again, really cool looking stuff. Now, the last thing I remember was sliding into the curve when I started to see that Jaguar swerve. Now, <laughs> you won't come back from Dead Man's Curve, Dead Man's Curve. All right, who wrote that song and what was the year of that song? Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so again, look at this. Nice panel detailing in here. Beautiful kit. Should be quite easy to put together and look amazing on your shelf. We've also got the old Ravel logo molded in place underneath here. And a date, 2020. So again, really cool. Now, let's take a look at these components. You can see just how great that bracing looks in there as well as up under the hood we do have a nice this one's got holes through it that's your uh, grill so again really cool stuff i guess that acts as a uh, shield for rocks flying in you know to protect the radiator but uh, very slick i don't think for the amount of parts in here i don't think this will be hard to get together it's just all these blasted sink marks that are in here that are going to be a bit of a trick to uh, figure out and get ready. But overall, I mean, this is uh, aces, I guess. This kit is aces. Our next parts tree consists of the interior panels. So here is that back luggage area, as well as our right and left hand side door panels and the braces and brackets that all go up into here. Now, looking at the parts tree, we can see all the wonderful detail involved in there. Again, Ravel is really showing top-of-the-line work. It's only all these mold marks underneath that are just <laughs> a little bit irritating, but overall, I think we can get those filled and sanded down quite flat. Next up, we get this wonderful gray parts tree, which includes our carburetors and the right and left-hand side steering column and master cylinder. We also get our exhaust manifolds, the shock absorbers, differential and covers, as well as the brackets, which go on the front and back of the differential, and the universal joints out here, as well as our steering with the brakes and our exhaust, and many other details and components. So let's bring this up to the camera. Again, really beautiful stuff. Boy, oh boy, this looks amazing. I can't wait to build this. How about you? Let's just rip this thing right. Here, I got my hobby knife. Let's just do it right now. No, wait, I got to do the review. <laughs> All right, but at any rate, you can see just how wonderful this is. And again, it'll look wonderful once all assembled. Our next gray parts tree includes both right and left hand side dashboards. It's really cool how they're mirrored here on the parts tree. Then we have our engine block and the oil pan, the radiator, bucket seats. These are beautiful looking. Bit of flash around the edges, which you'll have to get rid of. There's our fan with the uh, wonderful opening. You can see like my finger through there. Again, look at how great this is. Amazing work. Man, I wish every Ravel kit was like this. <laughs> Imagine a Chevy like this. That would be amazing. <laughs> At any rate, there's our instrument panel there. And remember, you get your choice of either uh, miles per hour gauges or um, metric, uh, kilometers, that sort of thing. Millimeters, millimeters per hour. How many millimeters per hour are you going? <laughs> Imagine that, eh? God. Sorry, officer, I was doing 490 millimeters per second, <laughs> per hour, per second, man, faster than the speed of uh, light. It's like Star Trek speeds. Whoop factor eight, Mr. Kyle. All right, anyway, looking at this, though, front and back, amazing. Just again, mold marks. Mold marks, go away, please. Anyway, there is your Jaguar gray parts tree. Here we have the chrome, glorious chrome, lots of shiny to look at. We've got our wheels right here, oh yeah, and then the knockoffs are over there. It's chrome, glorious chrome. <laughs> okay, enough of that. So there's our uh, windshield wipers there, and then our reflectors for the headlights, as well as the bezels. So if you're cutting these bezels out, I would cut back here and then 
carefully work your way in because these are very thin. If you try to clip them right where they connect, you might crack it. So just be careful. There's our overhead cams right there, as well as the wraparound front and rear bumpers and the connection piece for the front bumper for the license plate. And then right here, we've got our windshield. We've also got the window cranks and the rear view mirrors. Again, really wonderful stuff. There's that antenna. So let's just bring this up. Let's take a look at those wheels. Now, I recommend using a black wash in here or drill these right out and then wire your own. <laughs> okay, that's a major project. Uh, but yeah, overall, again, really wonderful work. Funny that there's not much mold marks on the cr chrome there. Pardon me. But again, you can see just how wonderful this all looks. So add a little shiny to that sports car. Here we have our glass components as well as the tires. This is basically the rest of all the plastic bits for the kit. So here we can see our wonderful clear plastic. Again, really nicely done. There's the covers for the headlights and the headlights themselves. Make sure you have these going north and south, east and west, very much like that right there, which is correct. You don't want them at weird angles, like pointing off this way. That is not good and not the way they actually go in the car. So just take care to get it right. Now looking at the tires, again, these are really interesting. This web in here almost looks like they should be for like a, a wooden car or something. You know, some toy. But uh, overall, not bad. They have a nice tread detail in here, if you guys can see that. And uh, there are no names on the side. Dunlop would have been nice to have on here. Get that proper British type rubber company. But again, overall, very nicely done. And last but not least, we get to take a look at the wonderful decal sheet. Remember when it was showing all those little decals? Well, here we go. So look at this. Look at these little fine lines in here. 18, 20, and 21. All different colors and whatnot. Have all these little logos. Now hopefully when you're putting these on the car, you won't actually lose any. Because boy, they are small. So really, really take your time. Use your tweezers. You know, use everything you can to get these out and on the car. Now here we've got the different gauge faces. So you got to make sure you really look at these to find out which is miles per hour and which is... Uh, meters per hour or kilometers per hour pardon me <laughs> getting my metrics all messed up all right there's the radio face got that looks like it should be on the glove box uh, there's a white oval right there a little bit of a grill this looks like a sign for something okay so we've got different uh letters going on here oh i get it so you get the netherlands circle here for example, and I do believe this is a corresponding license plate to the Netherlands. This would be the one for France. This is the one for Belgium. A Is A Austria? I'm going to say it is. So here's the one for Austria. <laughs> this would be Italy, and it even has Roma on there. And then the Czech Republic, or Czechoslovakia, and then the good old US of A. And it looks like, what is this plate from? Get my head right in here. It's a California plate from 61. So you could, uh, you know, play the uh, the song there, Dead Man's Curve, and build a diorama for that. Happened in 61. Here we've got Great Britain. And then D is Germany, Deutschland. And you got, I think one is uh, from 61 and one is modern. Yes, because there's the EU circle right there. So again, you got your choice of time period. And then a, a generic E-type, so that would be in the showroom or uh, whatever you want to do there. You know, maybe a turntable or something at one of the car shows, you know, in 1960 to issue in the new 61. You know what I'm saying, right? You know what I mean, Sharon? All right, to quote Ozzy Osbourne. But again, look at that wonderful decal sheet. Very nicely done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video where I got to show you this amazing Ravel Jaguar XKE. Really cool that a German company can build a British car and build it quite well, actually. Man, there's a lot of parts in there. Have you built one of these? If so, let us know down in the comments below how you liked it, how it went together for you, and if you'd build another. So if you enjoy this channel, don't forget to subscribe. 
right to us because we do all kinds of great model kit unboxings and we've done model kit unboxings in the past as well which you got to check out i've got over 200 videos on this channel and i'm sure that you will love to see this video right here and if you want to get some model car kits also check out our link to our website right here where you can get them online right now. And don't forget to become a member of this channel by clicking the join button. It would help us out greatly. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.